left to her women uh, as a term was defined first by the All China Women's Federation in 2007 to mean a single urban educated woman over the age of 27. And then after the term was defined by the Women's Federation, it was also adopted by the Ministry of Education as part of its official lexicon. Um, and then the Chinese state media led by Xinhua News, the People's Daily, um, started very aggressively perpetuating this term um, through a lot of news reports and columns and col commentaries. And the basic message was that women in their mid to late 20s um, who are educated really need to hurry up and marry before it's too late for them. Women face all kinds of discrimination. Um, I mean, there is tremendous discrimination from employers when women apply for jobs. Um, even though the law states that companies are not supposed to advertise based on uh, characteristics of your sex, um, it's very common to see ads, for example, looking for a woman who is a certain height, who weighs a certain amount, um, even has a, you know eyes that are set a certain width apart, um, and so uh, the, these kinds of ads are very common. Um, women typically face questioning from their employer or prospective employer about whether or not they're married, when are they going to get married, when are they going to have a child, um, and then if women are actually hired then they face tremendous hurdles in getting promoted. Um, so there's employment discrimination. Um, ever since the onset of market reforms, there's been a really dramatically widening gender income gap. Um, and my PhD research really focused on a new form of gender inequality and in wealth that was caused by China's incredible, unprecedented real estate boom. Um, and I argue that women were largely shut out of what is probably the biggest accumulation of real estate wealth in history. So there, there are many, many forms of sexism and discrimination against women. Um, and what is particularly ironic about the widespread gender discrimination today is that communist China was really founded um, on a principle of gender equality. And Mao Zedong had that very famous saying that women hold up half the sky. Um, so it's uh, really striking to contrast this resurgence of gender inequality in the post-socialist era with the early communist era, when at least nominally women were held up as being completely equal uh, with men and capable of doing anything that men could do. Well, the, the fact is that uh, China has a really vast propaganda apparatus, which has, um, for the past decade or more, been pushing very traditional gender norms. Um, and I argue that this is really a, another form of um, a women return to the home campaign. Um, and it's particularly targeting educated professional women in the cities. Um, and I argue that this is related to China's very severe demographic problems, including um, a, an extreme sex ratio imbalance, where there are currently about 113 boys born for every 100 girls, so there are tens of millions more men than women in China. Um, also, the government is very uh, preoccupied or obsessed with maintaining social stability, um, and I believe that in urging women to return to the home, this is um, uh, an attempt to address problems with social unrest and social stability as well, and pushing a norm of very strong patriarchal family. Um, and you see with the end of the one-child policy as well, and the initiation of the official two-child policy that there is new propaganda really pushing women or encouraging them strongly to have two children, 
Um, and this creates, I mean, we're already seeing an, a new form of even more intense gender discrimination when women apply for jobs because now employers expect that women will start having two children as opposed to one. Um, so uh, that's, that kind of very traditional gender norm is being pushed by the state. But on the other side, um, women in general, women themselves, particularly young women who are really educated, have completely different ambitions and dreams for themselves. They want gender equality, um, they want professional success, they want you know, to pursue their dreams. And so there's a real struggle going on between what the government is trying to force women to do um, and what women themselves want to do. Well, after all of the research that I did uh, looking into marriage and home buying um, for my dissertation, um, I came to the conclusion that basically marriage as an institution really doesn't protect women's rights in China today. And in fact, um, legally women are losing some protections with regard to marital property in particular. Um, so for example, in 2011, the Supreme People's Court issued a new judicial interpretation of the marriage law. And this new interpretation um, effectively says that if your name is not on the property deed of the marital home and you didn't contribute to its purchase or you can't prove how much money you contributed to its purchase, then the other side gets to keep the property. Um, and there's been a tremendous amount of controversy over that judicial interpretation. Um, it's really gonna be years before we can fully look at all the data and the effects. Um, but the fact is that um, in the research that I did, I found that it, it was extremely common for women getting married to leave their names off the, the uh, marital property deed. Um, for various reasons, for, for many reasons. There are many layers of pressure on these women, pushing them to basically forfeit the most valuable asset they will ever have. Um, now, there has been some progress with the recent passage of the anti-domestic violence law, and that, that really is a milestone legally, but there are a lot of problems with the legislation and we have to see how it's enforced. Well, there is definitely a new uh, independent feminist movement really starting from the ground up, um, pushed by young Chinese women, but you can see that the Chinese government is really cracking down on feminist activists. Um, and there's the very high profile case of the arrest of these young uh, women who were known as the Feminist Five last year. And uh, they were merely planning to hand out stickers about sexual harassment on subways and buses to commemorate International Women's Day. Um, but their arrest and detention really caused a huge international outcry. So they were released after about five weeks, um, but you could still see a very intense crackdown on women's rights activists in general.